good morning students so let's start our online geography class and we are in chapter 7 it is india the political division the location political division and physiography okay and in our previous classes we already learned about the uh, location uh, political division and some physiographic divisions of india and uh, I'm uh, telling you several. I'm telling you again several times. I've to, told you that you have to consult the atlas. Whenever you read the chapter, you have to consult the atlas or the map which is provided in your uh, book, in your textbook. Okay, atlas is the best, I think. Okay, and now today we will go to the other physiographic divisions of uh, India. Before that. I'm telling you again the main physiographic divisions which we already learned. That our div India is divided into six physical divisions. The northern mountains, the northern plains, the peninsular plateau, the coastal plains, third desert, the islands, and you know that the northern mountains is subdivided into Himadri, Himachal and Siwali. Himadri uh, uh, or the greater Himalaya, Himachal or the lesser Himalaya and Siwali or the outer Himalaya. And our northern plains is also subdivided into three port. Indus plain, the Ganga plain and the Brahmaputra plain. And the peninsular plateau is also subdivided into two parts, the Deccan plateau and the Malwa plateau. Okay. Uh, now, today we will learn about the coastal plains, third desert and the islands. So, now uh, we will go back to the atlas. Okay. You have to consult the we all have to consult the atlas and read the remaining parts of the physiographic divisions. Okay, so let's start. So, it's our India and we already uh, learned about the location. It's our India, the states, etc. And then today, we will learn about the coastal plains. Coastal plains are here. Okay, and showing you another map. Yes, it is. You can see here the coastal plains. Coastal plains in deep green. Okay. These are coastal plains. There are coastal plains along the margins of the Deccan Plateau. You, can, you know that it is Deccan Plateau. It is brown color Deccan Plateau. And the coastal plains along the margins of the Deccan Plateau. And the western coastal plain is relatively narrow. It is western coastal plain and here it is eastern coastal plain. The western coastal plain is relatively narrow. You can see here it is broader, it is narrower. Except in Gujarat. In Gujarat it is broad enough. Isn't it? Uh, western coastal plain is known as the Konkan coast in the north. Konkan coast in the north. Uh, here, it, here, this is uh, the two states here are Maharashtra and Karnataka. And the southern part is called the Malabar coast. Southern part is called as the Malabar coast. There are many lagoons and backwater along the Kerala coast. Here it is Kerala coast. You can see here the it is Kerala, Kerala this, this is Kerala. And along the Kerala coast, there are uh, uh, there are uh, many lagoons and backwaters. I am uh, telling you, explaining you what is lagoon. Lagoon is a water body uh, separated from larger water body. Here is larger water body, Arabian Sea. Lagoons is small water bodies which is separated from this ocean. And there are several beautiful beaches on, uh, on the Goa here, on the Goa, Kerala and Maharashtra. Maharashtra coast, Goa and Kerala. Here are many beautiful beaches, sea beaches, which is which are the um, uh, tourist attractions too. 
and the eastern coastal plain the eastern coastal plain is broader you can see broader than the uh, western coastal plain and more continuous than the west coastal plain okay uh, the southern part is called as the Coromandel coast you can see here it is called as the Coromandel coast there are large fertile deltas built by the rivers here which rivers are here yes here is Mahanadi and Godavari it is Krishna and Kaveri there are large deltas you can see in every mouth of the rivers there are deltas the tidal forests reach in mangrove trees cover large areas of the Ganga Delta here which is lies in West Bengal okay and known as the Sundarbans it is known for its rich biodiversity you know what is biodiversity uh, means here uh, different types of plants and animals uh, we can see here so that it is uh, 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 very famous for its biodiversity and you know Chilika here like Chilika Chilika in South Orisha is India's largest black, blackish water lake it is rich in but it is also rich in biodiversity it is a natural abode of the green sea turtles dolphins sandpiper migratory birds and several types of fish and now i am telling you the difference between western and eastern coastal plains firstly western coastal plains are narrower and eastern coastal plains are broader and there are more harbors as the coastline is indented and there are less natural harbors as the coastline is continuous and uh, in western coastal plain there presence of backwaters and here in eastern coastal plains more lagoons are present here and in western coastal plains there are no deltaic plains here in eastern coastal plains a number of deltaic plains are present and fishing is an important occupation along with plantation farming in western coastal plain okay and agriculture is an important occupation and crops such as rice, tobacco, sugarcane and jute are grown in eastern coastal plain. Major ports that is Mumbai, uh, Kandla, Kochi, Mangalore etc. located in western coastal plain. And there are a few ports, uh, important, few important ports are here such as Chennai, Paradeep and Bishikapatna. Okay. So, the coastal plain is completed and now we are going to third desert third desert here in the state of rajasthan to the west of the aravalli range you can see here the west of the aravalli range you here you, you can yes aravalli range uh, here is the third desert this is a region of inland drainage inland drainage uh, the actually there are many salt lakes of which the among which the sambar lake is the largest sambar is the largest salt lake in uh, this region most of the rivers are uh, actually it is called as uh, inland drainage system uh, remains here uh, because uh, uh, he as the most of the rivers are streams of this vast sandy regions either drain into saltwater lakes or disappear into the sand so that it is called as inland uh, this region is of inland drainage system Luni is the only large river in the third Luni is the only large river in the third okay you can see here and now that is covered by 
rock surfaces and sand dunes. Dunes are like, uh, you know, uh, like uh, hills of uh, sands, uh, small hills of sands. Dunes are vast tracts of, uh, the dunes are uh, always moving, they always moving with the wind. As the wind flows, the dunes al always move, mo uh, keep, keep, uh, they are moving. And moving sand with different shapes and sizes. Okay. And now I am telling you about the islands. Islands, you can see here. There are a number of small and large islands, some of which are of volcanic origin and some of are uh, coral origin. Lakshadip Island, here in Arabian Sea. Lakshadip Islands lying in the Arabian Sea are a group of coral islands. There are 36 islands in all. Actually, coral polyps are short-lived microscopic organisms which live in colonies. And the coral, uh, this organism, uh, secretion of these organisms uh, forms and, uh, and their skeletons uh, forms the reefs, coral reefs. And some of this, uh, uh, they're located, actually uh, this uh, island is uh, Lakshadi, located off the coast of Kerala. You can see here, off the coast of Kerala. Uh, and uh, some of these ring-shaped islands with fringing coral reefs are called atolls. Fringing means floating, floating coral reefs. Uh, coral reefs always float in uh, with the waves of the sea. They are called as atolls. These islands are hardly a meter above sea level. And so these are under the threat of being submerged in the sea. Next is Andaman and Nicobar Islands, which lie in the Bay of Bengal. They are a group of 324 islands that are volcanic in nature. Actually, these islands are the peaks of the submerged volcanic mountains. These volcanic mountains are under the sea. The Andaman Islands are separated from the Nicobar Islands by the 10 degree channel. Okay, here is 10 degree channel. Andaman and Nicobar between the 10 degree channel. Uh, and uh, Indira Point in Nicobar group of islands is the Last point of India territory, Indira Point. Barren Island is the only active volcano in India which is located here. Now, I am telling you about, uh, we already completed the all the physiographic divisions. Now, I am telling you about the uh, India as a geographical unit. Actually, according to the scientists, million years ago, there was a shallow and narrow sea called Tethys. Now I am showing you the now I am showing you the uh, diagrams diagrams to explain this. Okay, so let's go to the diagram. Uh, as I, I told you that according to the scientists, million years ago, there was a shallow and narrow sea called Tethys. This is called Tethys in the region where the Himalayas stand down. Here you can see it is Gondwana land. It is the peninsular part of India and it is the Tibetan landmass. Here was the sea as Tethys. Here and firstly I am uh, uh, just I'm describing you the first step it is. Just if, if we cross section, uh, if we uh, find a cross section of this uh, map, then we find this. It is TLM, that means Tibetan landmass, and that is Gondwana land. Tibetan land, landmass, it is Tibetan landmass, and it is Gondwana land. So, here is Tethys Sea between them. And the, uh, here, uh, between uh, the two landmasses, the, uh, the sea is here in the second uh, uh, diagram. We can see that the sea was gradually filled up with the sediments brought down from the 
land masses. Okay, these are the layers of sediments. And now, in third diagram, you can see here the gondola land masses come closer to the Tibetan land masses. As you know that our, our, on our earth crust, there are some plates which are always moving and they always come closer to each other or they uh, apart from each other. And when the gondola land come close to Tibetan land mass, then the sediments uh, that, uh, that collected here uh, in the Tethys Sea floor were compressed. They are compressed, folded and uplifted you can see uplifted gradually gradually uplifted and finally they form the himalayan mountain in the diagram four you can see finally they form the himalayan this himalaya So in this way, the Himalaya, the uh, young fold mountain, uh, came into form, and they, it uh, actually in this way it uplifted. And the denudation of the Himalayan range and peninsular India, and further deposition of sediments by the rivers resulted. You can see here the in this diagram how it is Gondwana land and Tibetan land must be here. Himalayan range is always, it is always uh, already it is formed. And you know that uh, Himalaya is uplifted till now as the uh, this process is uh, continued and it is uplifted. Okay. And now I'm going to the map again. And I think you all understand how Himalaya formed into the diagram. And now uh, I'm going to the map again and continue. Okay. The northern mountains, the northern plains, and the peninsular plateau together form a well knit geographical unit. Now I am telling you about the importance of different physical parts. The northern mountains have formed a physical barrier against foreign invaders in the past. The, as it is a high mountain, it uh, acts as a barrier which uh, prevent the foreign invaders in the past. And these mountains are responsible for the heavy monsoon rainfall over the subcontinent because rain bearing winds are forced to ascend, rain bearing winds from this sea, uh, Arabian Sea, which forced to. Uh, 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 actually, it is forced to ascend up the slope and heavy rain uh, follow. As these mountains are high in altitude, there are glaciers. Glaciers means the um, actually the uh, uh, river of snow, you can uh, tell. River of snow, glaciers, which makes the Himalayan rivers peren uh, perennial. And the mountain region has rich forest, for, forest resources the, that are potential hydroelectric power too as the, uh, as the rivers are uh, more uh, forced, forced uh, rivers are more forced here so that the hydroelectric power generated. And next is the northern plains. Northern plains are fertile alluvial soils and abundant water supply from various rivers. This region produces all the food grains needed by the people of India and the excess are imported to foreign countries. You know, Indo-Gangetic Plain is called as the football of India. Indo-Gangetic Plain is called as the football of India. And Peninsula Plateau. Next, Peninsula Plateau is a storehouse of minerals such as coal, iron ore, etc. It has many mineral-based industries. The region, this region produces rain-fed crops too, like millets, pulses, and oil seeds. The plateau is known for its cotton and sugarcane cultivation. And next is coastal plains. Coastal plains are rich agricultural regions producing a variety of crops and major parts and uh, sorry ports and harbors which are located in this region for uh, which facilitated uh, sea trade. 
so this part is very important and the beaches and islands are major it's uh, uh, the major tourist attraction okay and you know each major physical region is important in its own own way in uh, contributing to the welfare of the people and these four regions and their resources together make india a strong and un uh, united nation now i am showing you the major rivers of india okay in northern part not north indian rivers are indus ganga and brahmaputra and in south india mahanadi godavari krishna kaveri narmada and tapi and now i am telling you the differences between them actually north indian rivers all are perennial as they are glacier fed and peninsular rivers not all are perennial as they are rain fed so north indian rivers are glacier fed glacier fed and peninsular rivers are rain fed and North Indian rivers are capable of irrigation and navigation throughout the year, and peninsular rivers, uh, not all rivers in navigable irrigation, irrigation canals are present only near the deltas. And uh, North Indian rivers generate large amount of hydro power. Peninsular rivers are not always capable of producing power. And next point is towns and cities on the banks of many of these rivers are major pilgrim centers, such as Haridwar. Prayag and Varanasi, but but in peninsular uh, rivers such pilgrim centers are absent. And last point is most of these rivers are prone to floods. North India rivers are prone to floods, but so as the peninsular rivers uh, uh, non-perennial, they and uh, 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 they dry tracts and medium rainfall area, and the occurrence of flood is less here. So uh, this was the chapter. and i think you all uh, learn the chapter uh, with the map and in our next class i'll discuss on the question answers on this chapter okay so learn this chapter well and till our next class bye